trial by fire, uh -huh. but you passed the trial admirably. You survived, and not only did you survive, but you actually did well. And uh, you remember I was talking about nervousness this morning? Yes. Two kinds. Yes, and I have some of the technical. Uh, you certainly do. <laughs> if, if you lack of confidence. Yeah, no, no, this is definitely the first kind of nervousness, which is somewhere inside you, you don't feel well physically, and then of course you're going to be nervous. Like, uh -huh, uh -huh. Because, because, yeah, and so it's a very, very clear example of, of the, the finger action school simply not taken far enough. Uh, Dorothy Taubman, uh, uh, she dif distingu distinguishes between curling and curving. And she basically has, so the curving of the fingers, it's not a flat finger like that, but it's a, but the curving does involve the whole finger. And you'll notice, where's the end of your finger? <laughs> not that end, the other end. <laughs> yeah, is it really? <coughs> No. No. Curve your finger again. Curve it and look. Look at your hand. No, 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 not right here. But where does the curving? Where does this angle actually? Where does? Where is the bend actually happen? Yes, in the middle of your palm. Look at that. So if e if you even just thought about that when you were playing, that would already change your playing. A simple a, a simple a shift in self perception as this can actually help your technique. You see, it's not here. It's down here. And when you do that and you realize, my God, it's, it's bending in the middle of the palm, then that accesses the power of the palm. Mm -hmm. And then you, you already feel better when you play. So basically I saw this curling action very, very much in evidence, but this curving action very much in absence. Yeah. Right. And that's the source of your, that's the source of your insecurity. I mean, if you, you if you had to you know walk down the street like this, you know, well, of course you would feel insecure. You wouldn't feel like, hey, right? Okay. So that's a little bit what you've been doing. Now, sometimes it was more, and sometimes it was less. So many times it was, it was you were almost doing the right thing. For, for, uh, for instance, especially in here. When you were doing that part, you you. you the, the flow of notes is so regular, and you have to curl in every one to get this, da, 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 this clear articulation. And your hand actually reminded me of Martha Arbridge's. She, when she, she does that curling in, in, in the, the passage work, and her hand curls right up into a pretty tight structure like that. So there you are on the verge, you actually access a fair amount of this power, not all of it because then you would feel even better, but you were <laughs> accessing some of it. So you were on the verge of having a really well-organized hand where it's accessing its full structural power. There were other places where it was less so. Here you see, you instantly, so in my DVD I demonstrate this action here grows an arch, this action here collapses an arch. And you see, so there's a way of curling the finger, the bottom two joints of the finger, which <coughs> actually, yeah, which actually disempowers the hand. Okay. So in, we, we train the fingers, and many schools of piano playing train the fingers, and it inadvertently disempower the hand in the process okay. by training only the bottom two joints. So you, so remember when I was showing, I forget who, Eleonora, this curling mm -hmm. and Janet yesterday, mm -hmm. this curling that I curl, I curl, I curl, but I curl in a way that incorporates the top knuckle. So could you try that on Kina? Just take a note and curl, oh, but, and, and you see? Ah, now, that was the new thing. Did you see? It, do, it doesn't want to, it doesn't know how, but eventually it comes in, yeah. And now you could even do it this way, but curl the bottom joint, then curl the next joint, and he doesn't want to go, she doesn't want to go, but eventually she has to. And there, that's the new part, keep going, keep going. That's the new part. That's what's missing in your self-representation. Mm -hmm. Try again. As you can see, it doesn't want to, it doesn't want to, and then, up oh, here it comes. There it is. It has to appear. So that, in a nutshell, is what we're going to be adding to your technique. And try again. That's it. But it's interesting. It's even, look at that, look at that, look at that. I don't know if you can see it on the TV, but your hand is actually shaking, your hand, and as soon as this comes in, your it's hand stops shaking. Mm -hmm. But your hand actually stops shaking. It's mm -hmm. fascinating. Okay. 
it actually feels, you see it's, it's shaking, it's shaking, and now look, look, there is more, it's more secure. Yeah. So that sense of security right in here. And it simply comes from activating that joint. It's very simple, actually. <laughs> but that's, that's our starting point. So, now let's try, you see, we have to... Now, you, for instance, if we took the first three notes, I, and I gave you this exercise. Now, of course, we can't play Turkish march like this. kinesthetic representation. I exaggerate the movement I want. Okay. And I do that ten times. And then, when I do that, this joint is now involved in the movement. So I, I did the, the... This is why this rolling thing is, is so good for kids. You give them, you tell them, make yourself a, into a lowly holy or make yourself into some sort of tumbleweed or a... Now, but roll all the way over to here. Okay. So look, look how far I go. And I go all the way, look, I'm, I'm actually, I'm kneeling on my middle, middle phalange, the medial phalange, I'm kneeling on my middle, medial phalange, and my top knuckle is against the black back. Now go all the way up. That's it. Just play. Okay, but wait a minute. There was something. You notice when you're doing this, if your fingers completely let go. Look at this. It's like they're there. It's almost like the fingers are ropes, and they're just folding over like that. Okay. So when you did it like this, you had that quality, right? That's it. Ah. Sound and now your fingers, they had before. You see, the, tru oh, yes. the trouble with this, okay, so let's get into it a little bit in more detail. When you curl well here, but then this is flat, then there's actually pressure down through the finger that comes from the arm. As soon as this happens, then everything's in balance. But now this is sunk down, and now there's pressure mm -hmm. going through instantly. And that makes the fingers stiffen in resistance, okay? So when I come up here, oh, now my finger doesn't have to stiffen. It's standing, but it doesn't have to stiffen. It's just standing in what I call unstable equilibrium. Now there's a certain amount of muscularity that, to keep this joint potent here. I don't, I don't know if you can feel in here, like on my fourth finger. Look, I'm standing up and you feel there's a, yeah. I'm, I'm sort of, just as in my normal hip joint, even when I'm standing well, yeah. my normal hip joint, there's still some effort. Mm -hmm. But this is not blocking effort. This is this, this effort, effort, effort to launch me upwards. Now, launching myself upwards is completely different from resisting a downward force and getting stuck. You see? So now that's an action rather than a resistance, rather than a holding. Now, do that one on the third finger. Actually, the most difficult to do is because you see it's the longest. Is it, is it the longest, I feel? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So the third finger is the one that tends most to get stuck. Instead of moving through its arc, moving through its complete arc of movement. Uh, not this. Okay. This is something else altogether. <laughs> this has actually nothing to do with what we're doing. This is like, it's like egg beating. <laughs> I just seen if I felt loosey-goosey. Yeah, okay. Yeah, but, the, but you see, my loosey-goosey is functionally derived. Okay. So, the function is moving a finger in order to move a key. And that's a pretty, it's a two-dimensional movement. It's actually, there's nothing three-dimensional about it. It's just, it's just the lever goes this way and that lever goes that way. And it all happens on a two-dimensional plane. So, if I can find my loosey-goosey along this line of action, then there's something very economical about it. There's something very movement efficient about it. 
That's it. That's it. So now, I love that. <laughs> that looks so great. The finger looks so potent because it, it's standing powerfully and it's completely in movement. Look at the movement quality of that there. See, that, that's, that's not the same hand that was just playing this thing before. That hand was sort of cramped and in distress, like, help, help, help me get through this. And now this is just like, hey man, I'm hanging out. You know, I'm hanging out. I'm up high, but I'm hanging out. You know, I'm just comfortably standing anywhere along this arc of movement. That's right. Now would you do, please do me two fingers and the same thing. Now you're hanging out in two of them. You see, the hand went at a slightly different angle, right? Because the fingers aren't the same length. That's okay, your just hand adjusts to that angle and now it's hanging out at this angle. And try these two. And again, the angle shifts, you see the angle's a little bit different, it's a little bit more over here, but that's just normal. That's the skeleton adjusting to the new configuration. Try all three. Up, oh, come on, all the way. That's it. That's it. And now, try this. That's right. Now you see, you kept moving through the whole thing, and you were sort of half wanted to do their stiffening thing, but because you're going this way, they couldn't. So they did something new instead. Okay. So, now try this now. So it looks like it's the old movement. Mm -hmm. But because I've incorporated this rolling forward, now this part of the hand is involved as well. Okay. That's right. Do that again. That's right. Now you, you realize your fingers are not stiffening at all. Yeah. And now, <laughs> does this make you feel good? <laughs> no. No, thank you for being honest. I knew it. <laughs> There's no <Like>, security. <laughs> exactly. Like you feel like, I can't play like this. I'm completely insecure. Like it's just free movement. That's so undefined. I, I don't have any parameters. I'm just floating in this non-defined kind of soup. It's so weird. It's just bizarre. Yeah, well that's how it feels at first. That's, but you actually have stability. It's just such a new form of stability that you're not familiar with. Because you see, in the moment when you play, you see, when, in the moment when you play that, look how defined your entire skeletal structure is. You see? And you even got a little bit of real stability. You even actually sort of stood up almost firmly that time, which is fine. Because you didn't lose your movability. And look, now look, stand firmly this time. And stand firmly. Yeah, that's good also. Because you're not stiffening. Standing firmly is not the same as stiffening. When I stiffen, I feel there's a pressure down that's compressing me. The pressure down is trying to collapse me. And I'm resisting that pressure. Mm. When I stand firmly, there's no pressure down trying to collapse me. It's a movement up into my structure. It's exultant. It's the structure of the bones fully manifesting their power. You see, it's, there's no fighting against compression. It's simply, I'm standing firmly, but I'm not pressed. I mean, look, it feels like I'm pressed into the key. But look, when you stand up, yeah. do you press the ground with your feet? No, you're just standing up. You're not pressing the ground with your feet. And so if somebody came along and pressed your head down like this, then you would feel that you're exerting pressure in the ground, and it's very unpleasant. But normal standing, or even normal sitting on the sit bones, it's just going up. And that's what you're doing now with your fingers. That's the basis for playing. That feeling, that feeling is what you want in, in this. So now let's just reverse the order. There you go. Nice. Oh, you, you got sneaky. You even, I've been avoiding the thumb on purpose, right? But now you've got your thumb in, 
and you did well. You stood on the thumb the same way. You feel the difference? Do you feel how I call this, this feels skeletal? Now, does that make sense to you if I describe it in those terms? sense of facility. Yeah? Now do you notice that this touch, this is not going to have you end up being nervous. Mm -hmm. Do you feel there's comfort? Mm -hmm. There's comfort, there's ease. The ease is skeletally derived. It's, it's, it's derived by having all the parts of this bone chain work for you instead of working against you. You see, compression, ah, desperation, <laughs> ease, confidence, nice, warm and soft. <laughs> Bravo. Try the next one. Now, did you notice that on the first one, you yeah. didn't get it, and it was instantly that old poke, but you, you know how to get out of it now. That's right. That's fantastic. That's right. Go on. Next. <laughs> Bravo. Bravo. Let's take a rest. Oftentimes when we take a rest, let your hands sit in your, in your lap and even maybe let what you did very, very nicely. You put the, the hands down here so that the, the, this top knuckle is at the edge of the knee. And then you see the fingers curling over the knee. And then there, there's that curl. I guess the camera can't see that. Oh, no, it can't. Anyway, I can do this. So you see that this curl right here. And you see, you don't have to do any effort. Mm -hmm. Your fingers are just lying there. But they're already in that natural shape where this, this this joint is so nicely pronounced. And the sense of, oh, I could, I could roll forward and include this joint in the movement instead of, instead of excluding, banished to the hinterland. We don't send this joint to Siberia. We bring it in out of the core. The spider came in from the core. We include it, we bring it back into the picture. And just putting a hand on the knee like that is a nice way to do it. So often when I'm, when I'm here, I've done a lot of effort that way, I've done a lot of effort that way, and then I come this way. So that's a nice thing to do. Um, have, now the other hand was almost more of a problem, even though the, even, even though the notes aren't as difficult as all those 16s. Do you know why? Well, because it's just, actually, when you have to go, then there has to be a modicum of movement. But here it's possible to, to shift into complete non-movement. It's just compress, 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 Constant compression. Now play it your old way. Do you remember? See how your movement is very, very good, very, very, very alive movement, and totally confined to the bottom right. two joints of the finger. And now that's a flat one. I'm, I, I, you see, sometimes I teach this to get this joint going. I teach, okay, totally flat finger. For you, I, I, I feel that for you that's a little bit too primitive, like just to go totally flat. And I'm, I'm thinking when we roll forward like this, we, we keep some movement in here and we just add. So look, if you could just add, just go like this. Yeah. That's beautiful. Look at the, how the hand folded. Ah! That folding is what I like. And now, same thing on the, 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 this. Ah, you see the third finger. It, it finds, it takes some time to find a way. How could it? Ah! But then it figures out it can fold under. Ah, there, now you're figuring it out sooner. Now it, ah, see?
see now it's already happening already at the beginning. It, it, it wasn't delayed. Yes! That's, that's how you play these notes. That's it. This is not banished. This is not excluded. She's a part of it right from the word go. It was so interesting how you learned it. First it was sort of delayed and oh, oh there it is. And then very quickly, oh, well, why delay it? Just, just, let's just have this a part of my movement from the very beginning. Look at this nice little mountain here. See, so make the mountain. That's it. You make the mountain. Yeah, a little sooner, please. That's it. That's it. Make the mountain as soon as you can. That's right. Now, can you go very slow? physical stability, a sense of physical comfort and a sense of physical confidence. Mm -hmm. There's no more inner conflict. Yeah. Now that will eventually uh, translate into a, a more bouncy feel. Now I'm not sure how to explain this. For instance, Great. 
mind is, for me, it's the mind of a musician at work. You know, musicians are constantly making these little adjustments to make the thing come to life, right? Mm -hmm. Now you have a hand that can do, do that. It's not, it's not your musical ideas trying to fight their way through a hand that's only half, half cooperating. Now, the, diff, the most difficult thing for you was the... So, it's written like this, right? But, did you ever practice them holding everything down? No. Look at that. Bravo. That's it. And the wonderful thing is, you manage to even include your thumb. Many people, they do this, and they get all this really great, and then when they play their thumb, whack. <laughs> So you see, there's a down and there's an up, but they're in harmony. The down force and the up force are in harmony now with each other. Just as when we stand up, gravity is pulling us to, uh, down, but we're going up. 
And we feel great in that. We don't feel like we have to struggle to stand up. We just stand up. Mm -hmm. It's the most natural thing in the world. Well, this is too. Mm. Every one of them is generated by that. That's right. That's right. Now, I'll have to do a funny thing now. Get the, on the key like that, and this time, do this. That's right. And not even, not even this, but this. So, that's right. You see the difference? Mm -hmm. When you do that, it actually feels different from the first time, eh? Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. And so, now, very, very light. Hear that sound? That's it. That's it. I like that one. See, so you invested, actually, arm weight in You wanted to go loud? Yeah. When I go loud, you see, it's still Pink. all up. That's it. Bravo. Now do. That's right. That's it. That's right. Now. And then grow. Pretty amazing, eh? Yeah. Great. Okay, now why didn't I give you this first? What, why, uh, when we started looking at these octaves, why did I have you go through all this first? Because yeah. this forces me to the, grow here and not push. That's right. I, I was afraid if I gave this to you first, maybe you'd do a little bit of a, a, a pushing and then come out, and a push and then come out. But if we put this that's in right. our self-image, this growing, and then it's, it's very easy to transfer it. That's right. Listen to, listen to your sound. <laughs> Fantastic. Bravo. And by the way, that time you almost compressed. But you got out of it. Yeah. And actually, there's a way of playing where you, you're right on the borderline of compression. But if you get out of it soon enough, you're, you're fine. Okay. But I like more... Start the movement before the note sounds, and then... Right. Wow, you like this. Yeah, this one was a little... That one. You, you almost compressed it. So, now get down. Right. You see, if you get, get down, down, then you don't compress. You can't. Hard, is it? You're not sort of trying to do this. You're still doing. This. I think I'm setting first. Mm, but yeah, I am pressing. Yeah, yeah. you, you, you got to watch it. That, that moment, <laughs> the old habit kind of creeps in. You don't notice it. Yeah, like that. So try this a couple of times. And then. Now I actually uh, sometimes I can actually on a black note I'll actually put, fold my fingers together like this. Look at this, Pac-Man. Yeah, and then Pac-Man plays. Look at that! Wow, that was the best yet! Look at that! No compression. You hear there's clarity and thinness in it. It's a very specific sonority. And now, look at how your hand feels when you do this. It's very light. You hear how light you feel? And now, but you do the movement. Yeah, you just... That's right! You, you see? There, when you do it really nice, there's no compression whatsoever. Yeah, you see? Now, can you get that feeling in this one? Yeah. Bravo. This is playing the piano. That's playing the piano. You see, you're using your fingers. You're using your fingers fully. Every possible part of the finger is involved in the movement. And then all the rest of you goes along for the ride. Yeah, listen to your sound. Yeah. You, you hear the sound in the hall? There's something alive about your staccato. It goes all the way down the hall. You hear? Uh, very nice. 
Why don't we try, because look, it's, it's just a variation of this. Yeah, it, But you see, it has to be totally light. You see, Were you holding this now? Uh, thing is, it, you, you remember when we did this, feel the incredible lightness, mm -hmm. then you've got to have that same lightness here and here. Yeah. That's right. So it looks like you're rotating, and you are rotating, but you feel like you're just doing a slap. trying to show Janet that the other day we were having it's a hard thing to get that this part is pumped without being stiff it's empowered and potent but not rigidified mm -hmm. so that you'll have to work at a little bit one okay do this exercise again but this time come over here come over here yeah and 
look at this knuckle here, you see it's so great. You might even go, no, no, don't do that. Uh, uh, do this. Do this. That's it. Now what's the, oh, look. Your thumb is bent in a funny way. So you see, you're gonna, now, now come, now come here. Let's play that. Stand up. Wait a minute, play that and hold it and come around this way. There! Look at this muscle. Look at this. It's bulging. It's the first dorsal interosseus in action. That's wonderful. I didn't know I had that muscle. Exactly. Now, your thumb, if it's too curled, it won't. Ah, that's even better. You see? The thumb is. That's, do you ever go ice skating? Yeah. This is like ankle skating. And this is like, ah, uh, okay. right. so this, well, you will, you will do that better when you discover something about this bridge here, standing up on this particular bridge, and you have to change the angle and make the, the wrist a little lower, a little higher, somehow fool around with it, you see, I, uh, Glenn Gould, my countryman, he used to play like this. This flat, this flat, this very big. So he did it great, but we, I would like you to do this one. Yeah. Ah. So you remember when we, the first thing we did, we rolled forward. Remember we rolled forward? Now your second finger has forgotten what it learned. So you see, every time we go to some new configuration, then we'll find, oh darn, it forgot it, and I have to teach it all over again. So, now. I've never done this in my life. Look, I never did this in my life. This is the first time I've ever done this. I've tried to roll forward here while holding on to this thumb. And of course, the angles have to change a little bit, but you can do it. Now roll all the way forward. Remember how far forward we went? That's right. Look at that. That teaches something from this bridge. See, the bridge needs to be pulled. It needs to be held it needs to have power without being rigid. So each joint has to work full. Each joint has to be able to flex full. And then, even in a strange configuration like this, it has to be able to do that. And now try this again. And then, it's better. Ah, that's even better. So you need to change your position here. Now, why am I having you do all this? So that when you do this, that this feels more potent. Okay. You see? I'm hoping that this feels, and now I'm like, doggy, doggy, doggy. Now try this again. And I'm hoping that, and now to hold both those ones. No, hold the octave, hold the octave, and come back down. Ah, and now this feels better. Yeah? You see, so we're, we're, it's getting a little finicky, this work here. It's been very complex. But you, when we brought the wrist back down, then this got potent again. So when the wrist is too high, then that's going to tend to become impotent. Yeah. And when the wrist gets down, then she comes in, up into her potency. And this is a very common phenomenon, the wrist wanting to take over. And then she poops out. So you, you, it's not like a low wrist is good. Right? It's, we, we lower our wrist to encourage this part to fully come into its role. You understand? There you go. Okay, that's it. And now play. With the lower wrist. It's perfect. Okay, and now play. That's it, go ahead. Hold this. And where, look at your wrist. What's it doing? No. Yeah, right, and then when it went down, this came up. Okay. So that's what I want. I want this. Yes! Now look. He ah. wants the ball or what? Yeah. Okay, now really, go here. Palm. Okay. Right. And now think of that when you're playing this. Right, that's it. Okay, so... The wrist is going to want to come up too much, but then the hand is disempowered. See, see, I keep this power, I keep this power. Look at where my wrist is. That's
struck you so much that you were working too hard to get Look, when the palm is down here, it stays with every working that's It's a, a craftier way of maintaining it. See there, when this part doesn't try to take over, then this part doesn't have to use effort to resist. And this almost maintains itself, just as if, look, it's bent. Look, they're bent. Look at this. It's bent. Do this. You see, look, it's bent. No effort. So we, we're trying to get as close to this kind of maintenance of this structure as we can in, in plane. Now, the octave is more difficult because it's stretched out. There's a way of doing it in the octave too. Okay. Great. I I, I was I, I was afraid I I felt that your hand going into some sort of holding in the octave, mm -hmm. and uh, I was afraid that we're going to start ruining all the good work we did when when you did this, mm -hmm. and it was totally just a bony structure ruining it. So so you see that looseness? See, look mm -hmm. at this. Look at this looseness right here. This is what I want you to take away from the lesson most. So, so the octave stuff was good, but we did, but really take away this incredibly potent bony structure that's completely free of, of effort. It's just the bones folding in on themselves. And then you can do it anywhere. Okay? Very nice. Thank you. Yeah, good, good lesson. Very nice. Yeah. If she would respond well to treatment, yes. <laughs> Great.